Uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the today's webinar session brought to you by Siksha Study Abroad. This is an informative session on the MBA and MS programs offered by the University of Indiana Polis in USA. So before we move further, I would like to introduce our presenter today. Devon Pulliam is uh, the one who will be conducting today's session and help you all with all your queries regarding the program and the universities. Also, I request you all to put your queries in the chat box. And if you wish to talk to Devon 101, please raise your hand. Please use the raise hand button and we'll pick your queries at the end of the session. So I hand, hand it over to Devon now. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Devon Pulliam. I'm the Director of Graduate Business Programs Recruitment with the University of Indianapolis. Uh, this presentation is going to cover two of our programs uh, at UND, it's gonna cover our MBA program and it's gonna cover our uh, Masters of Science in Management program. So let's go ahead and get started. These uh, presentations are gonna go quickly because uh, I gotta cover both of them in about 30 minutes, but uh, you will be able to ask questions in the last 30 minutes of me. So if something goes by fairly quickly, make note of it, we can get uh, the questions answered for you uh, somewhere along the line. Um, for those that, that may not understand, um, the University of Indianapolis is located in Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, so Indiana is a state in the United States. It's about in the middle of the country. Um, and Indianapolis is the capital of, uh, of Indiana. So it's a city of about a million. Uh, we are pretty conveniently located on the south side of Indianapolis. Uh, we have tremendous uh, infrastructure here. Uh, we have on-campus housing. Uh, so even if you live on campus, it's easy to get to campus, or you can live on campus at that point in time. Um, as a graduate student, we have uh, Greyhound apartments. So if that's something that you want to <clears throat> pursue somewhere along the line, you would just let us know, and then we could go from there. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is uh, in the MBA, uh, we're very well respected. We're accredited by the ACBSP. Um, we were founded, our MBA was founded in 1972. We were the first MBA in Indianapolis. Um, we were the first to offer a supply chain major uh, in the uh, MBA. We were the first to offer a, an applied analytics major uh, within the MBA. We were the first to have a full-time uh, one-year MBA. So it's, we're a lot of firsts. We're small. We can make changes very quickly uh, to be able to accommodate uh, the, the needs of the industry. And that's something that's really key here. Um, ACBSP, we're a teaching institution. We're not, um, it's not about theory. It's not about research. It's about giving the students the skills needed to be able to get a job, okay? Um, so that's some of the information that I talked about there. These are some of our faculty that we have. One of the key things that I want to talk about with our faculty is that our faculty have an average of 10 years of experience in industry. So they are DBAs or PhDs now in teaching, <clears throat> but they do have that, that experience and they maintain that um, uh, connection to industry to be able to make sure that the curriculum fits what industry wants. These are some of the partners that we've worked with over the years uh, here and around Indianapolis. Obviously you can see, even though they're here in Indianapolis, these are some major global players like Rolls-Royce, uh, Raytheon, uh, Visteon. These are, these are either federal or global players. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about the evening program. We have two MBA programs I want to talk about. One is our evening program. The other is uh, our one-year full-time program. If you're not wanting to try to do the program in one year, the evening program is what you will want. Uh, it has some relative flexibility. International students are required to take nine credit hours in the fall and nine credit hours in the spring. The summer is up to them. Um, but it does have three times during the year that it starts, January, May, and August. Um, it's a pretty decent value, 690 US dollars per credit hour for a 45 credit hour program. Um, probably the biggest advantage of the evening program is that you can complete concentrations during the program. So we have um, concentrations in uh, finance, 
applied analytics, global supply chain, and uh, org leadership, organizational leadership. Uh, you can complete those while you're doing uh, the MBA, something that you can't do in the one-year full-time program. Um, so the evening program provides some, some more flexibility and probably taking the program at a little more uh, of a digestible pace, okay? Because the, the one-year program is pretty intense. Um, the, the programs are both, uh, you know, both have the same type of curriculum. As you can see here, the curriculum is pretty uh, technical, finance, accounting, um, uh, applied analytics, uh, operation strategy, quantitative business tools. Uh, there's a capstone course. There's the concentrations that I talked about. And, the, and then the capstone course, okay? We also have a one-year full-time MBA program that starts one time a year, which is in August. Uh, you cannot get a concentration then, but it is a very value-added MBA. The, the MBA in uh, the one-year program uh, has an international trip uh, that is, takes place in the uh, spring and uh, the March timeframe. Uh, you get a laptop, there's an executive career coach, uh, same curriculum, um, but just a lot more class, five classes in the, in the, the fall. There's four classes with, a, um, with an international trip in the spring. And then you do take the summer session, uh, which is four classes and a business plan that's due. So one year full-time, uh, pretty intense. Uh, the, the, the evening program is a little more digestible, but these are, you know, these are really good. They are STEM designated programs. Both of our MBAs are STEM designated. Um, so that is, you, you earn your one year of OPT for getting the master's, and then it's a two-year extension on the OPT. So it's three years of OPT for completing the MBA at the University of Indianapolis. Um, just some basic um, um, housekeeping tips as far as with the university itself. We do have a state-of-the-art finance lab equipped with 12 Bloomberg terminals um, that you would have access to. Uh, you would have also have access to our networking events, speaker series events, uh, career advising, alumni events. This is a great way to be able to start to build your network and start to learn more about industry and connecting with the industry, particularly here in the United States and even more particularly here in Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, student services, the sporting events are free. The cultural events are free. We have a state-of-the-art library. Um, we, over 100 countries are represented. Uh, on campus, India is very well represented on campus. Uh, so, and we have a lot of alumni uh, that have come through now that have been uh, from India as well. So we can connect uh, with a lot of, of resources there to be able to have students feel comfortable. Those are some of the international trips we've taken in the past. Okay, so let's talk about the application process. The application process is gonna be the same for both the evening and the one-year uh, full-time MBA program. Uh, the good news is, is that for sitting in on this webinar today, I will waive the $50 application fee. So you would wanna copy this down just as you see it there in the gray at fee waiver. When you go to submit your application, if you type that in, that will waive the $50 application fee. You can find the application at und.edu as you see there on the screen. Okay, so what is needed for the, uh, the program. Well, we're gonna need your transcripts and we'll talk a little bit more about transcripts here in just a second. Two letters of recommendation. So peers, colleagues, supervisors, former college professors, someone that could say, this is why you would be good in an MBA program. You need to provide a resume and you need to write a statement of purpose. And the statement of purpose is uh, a, one, a one page, three to four paragraph essay that covers your education and background, your career goals, and how you think that an MBA is gonna be able to help you reach those career goals. Right now, uh, GMAT GRE is part of the requirements. However, every application is reviewed for a possible waiver. So basically you would complete all of the application and then uh, the admissions committee would review it for a possible GRE GMAT waiver. A lot of people ask me, what is it that gets that waiver. Generally speaking, what they're looking for is proven quantitative ability, either through your education or through your work experience. That's something that's probably very good to highlight in your statement of purpose 
uh, when you're writing it. Okay, so one thing about the University of Indianapolis is we do not have an internal way of being able to evaluate your transcripts. Uh, this is something that we are working on now, but it is certainly not there at this point in time. So you will have to have your transcripts evaluated by a company that is accredited by either the NACES or the uh, AIECE that you see there, the AIEC. You can see both of the, the websites there. Um, what do most people use? They, they use WES, WES.org. Um, but some people find the cost of West to be uh, too much. And you certainly, as long as the company that you're using is approved by one of these organizations, it is approved to be able to use. So that is a really critical key piece of the application uh, portion of the University of Indianapolis is that your Indian transcripts, your international transcripts have to be evaluated and then sent to us. What we're looking for is that you have the equivalent of a US bachelor's degree, okay? Um, I, I get asked all the time, I have a three-year degree, does a three-year degree count? It's really less about the years and more about the credit hours. You're really looking to try to get close to 120 credit hours, but really it's one of these organizations telling us that you have the uh, equivalent of a U.S. bachelor's degree that is critical. We do require uh, English proficiency exam, uh, TOEFL score of 79, 6.5 on ILETS. We do uh, except Duolingo as well, 100 uh, is the score there. Okay, so TOEFL, ILETS, uh, and, and Duolingo are accepted. Once you have been accepted into the program, you are expected to file a statement of financial support uh, with our federal government. Unfortunately, at the University of Indianapolis, we do not have any scholarships, no teaching assistantships, or graduate assistantships. Everybody basically is providing the funds to be able to go to the university. To Indianapolis. Once you have been accepted, the I-20 is issued with to you at this point in time. And I will say this, we do have, we are still accepting applications for our programs in August, but as you know, it's now July the 7th, so time's running short. Um, we certainly would accept your application, we certainly would review your application, but just understand, we don't play a role in the visa uh, meetings so that's something we'll issue it but then you've got to get uh you know with the uh the indian folks and and work with them on your visa so we don't play a role in that i'm gonna skip Why this video. Get i'm gonna skip that video for right now since we are under a time crunch um so why does someone choose to do a university of indianapolis mba it is a respected rigorous applicable mba okay the people that know us know that it's a quality program. Uh, you're going to be going through a rigorous enough program that you are going to know and have the skills that you need as an MBA. What can you do with an MBA? You can work in finance. You can work in accounting. You can work in global supply chain. Uh, you can work in marketing. Uh, it's a very, very extensive program uh, that gives you the skills to be able to get a job straight away. Uh, obviously, we have convenient options. We have the evening program. We have the one-year program. Industry experience professors, I talked about that before, an average of 10 years of experience with our professors. Small class sizes. Uh, class sizes range somewhere between 15 to 20 students. So that's a really good ratio of professor to student. And then personal attention. Um, here is my contact information and Kim Lord's contact information. Um, if you need anything else uh, once this program is done um, or this webinar is done and you have questions, you should feel free to uh, reach out to me. If the 833-8932 number that you see there, uh, that connects to WhatsApp. So you can contact me there. You also see my email address there. I wouldn't necessarily use the 788 number. That's my office number. And uh, I'm, I'm not always uh, in the office, so it will, a, a message there will forward to my email, but the best way to get a hold of me is on WhatsApp with my cell number, okay? So that very quickly is our MBA, and like I said, I'll answer questions as we go along, but let's talk now about uh, the Masters of Science in Management program. Um, this is a great program that... Um, a lot of people ask me, what is the difference in these particular programs? 
um, MBA versus Masters of Science in Management. An MBA is designed to give you the skills to be able to go out and work in finance, to go out and work in marketing, to go out and work in operations or applied analytics. The Masters of Science in Management focuses on management, the direct management of personnel, okay? So you could be the best financier, the best accountant, the best marketer. It does not necessarily qualify you to be a manager of those particular people. And this is what the Masters of Science in Management is designed to do, okay? So when we go through this, if you have those questions, that's really what we're looking at, is that the MBA is really more technical. The Masters of Science in Management is more about the direct uh, management of personnel. Okay, so the Masters of Science in Management does work in a very different way in that it works as a cohort, whereas in the uh, MBA, in the evening program, we take students in January, we take students in August, we take students in May, uh, and the Master of Science in Management starts one time a year, which is in August, uh, and it can be done in a one or a two-year format, okay? So if the Master of Science in Management, if you want to do the one-year format, you are doing four classes, one class each night from 5.45 p.m. to 8.45 p.m. for three consecutive semesters. So it'd be August, January, and, and May, those three semesters, four classes each semester, that finishes you up in a year. If you do the two-year format, it's two classes a semester for six semesters. So, and it does qualify for uh, international students. One important point here, though, is that this is not a STEM-designated program. The MBA is STEM-designated. It qualifies for the OPT extension. This, you'd, you'd earn a year of OPT, but you do not qualify for the OPT extension with the Masters of Science and Management. It is not STEM designated. It is a cohort format, so you go through the program with all of the same students. That differs from our evening MBA where the program is pretty much your own. You kind of go through the program and set the program up yourself. Uh, you're not going through with the same students all the time. The Masters of Science and Management is a hybrid delivery. Uh, the, mass, the MBA is all in class. Uh, there is no online portion. With the Master of Science in Management, it's 12 courses, uh, three credit hours each for 36 credit hour programs. Eight of the 12 courses are in person. Four of the classes are online. The good news is it still qualifies for international students because you're always in one in-person class per semester. So in the first semester, it's two in-person classes. But in the second, third, fourth, and fifth semesters, it's one in-person class, one online class, okay? And then the last semester is two in-person classes. These classes are also held in the evening from 5.45 p.m. to 8.45 p.m., even the online classes, because they are synchronous format. You are showing up with all of your classmates taking the class at the same time. This is information that we've already pretty much covered within the MBA, but it's still experienced faculty, small class sizes, um, there's a, definitely an emphasis here on applied learning, um, and we are ACBSP accredited. Okay, so I'm going to talk about these uh, courses in a very general manner. This particular uh, uh, webinar that I, the, the presentation that I have here, will break down each one of these classes. We don't have time to go through each one of the classes, but I can tell you in general what you're looking at with the Masters of Science and Management. With the Master's of Science in Management, you, it really kind of breaks down into two types of courses. The first type of course is what I would call business essentials. So you do not have to have a business background to be able to qualify for the Master's of Science in Management. You don't have to have a business background to qualify for the MBA either, to be honest with you. So there are some what I would call business essential classes here, things like operations, uh, human resources, marketing, accounting and finance. Then there are the classes that really drill down into the crux of the program, which is management. So you have things like ethical conflict, ethical leadership and conflict management, managerial communication skills, managerial judgment and data-driven decision-making, change management and innovations, developing and managing teams, interpersonal influence, power negotiations and deal-making. Okay, so this really focuses on the management of people. So. If someone were to ask me, Devin, which program should I choose? The question really is, what is it that you wanna do in your career? If you wanna be in finance, if you wanna work directly in marketing, if you wanna do um, 
uh, operations or applied analytics, then you really need to do the MBA. If your goal in your career is to pretty much stay in your industry and, and manage people, then the master's of science in management is the program for you, okay? So very quickly, I'm gonna go through uh, and, and bypass these because this just breaks down each one of the courses. If you wanna go into it in a, in a more uh, defined way, we certainly could do that in a one-on-one -on -one session outside of this webinar. You and you finance lab, you've seen these slides before they came on the game. Okay, so the cost of the program, $690 a credit hour for a 36 credit hour program. Uh, there are service fees that you can see there uh, with the uh, university, uh, $742 for full-time students, $448 for part-time students. So if you do the one-year program, you'd be considered full-time. Uh, if you did the two-year program, you're considered part-time, but understand you do, it still does qualify because you are getting 18 credit hours in the year because you're taking that summer semester. Okay, the application process is basically the same as the MBA with one distinction, and that is uh, no GRE GMAT is required for the Master's of Science in Management, okay? So in the MBA, it's a requirement that we will review to see if you qualify for a waiver. In the Master's of Science in Management, it isn't required at all. It is not required to do the GRE GMAT for the Master's of Science in Management. Uh, the international uh, requirements are still the same. You still have to have a transcript evaluation so you need to use a, a company that is accredited by one of those organizations. We still need English proficiency exam uh, and the uh, statement of financial support uh, is issued uh, or would need to be issued from you uh, when you're accepted and we issue the I-20, which is the visa at the same time. Again, uh, are we taking students into the Master's of Science and Management program for fall? Absolutely. Um, but as you would know, if you don't have your transcript evaluation done um, and you don't have your English proficiency done, time is now very short. I mean, we are now at uh, the 1st of June and these programs start, I want to say, August the 29th is when they start. OK, uh, people will ask about uh, application deadlines. Uh, July 15th is, is uh, the date that you would shoot for for application deadlines. Um, and like I said, it's, I understand that is a tight time frame, but that is uh, what we're looking at. Again, this is my contact information here. Um, with my cell number there, you can reach me on WhatsApp. I realize I have gone through these uh, very, very quickly, but I am going to be here until uh, for the next half hour to answer your questions. So I look forward to that. I'll go ahead and leave my contact information up there and open up the floor to any questions. Well, it's just an informative session and I'm gonna now un unmute our participants and who's gonna ask you for the questions directly, okay? Uh, I'm gonna unmute Emil for now and Emil, can you hear us? I guess he's not with us. So let me ask someone else to be, to be a participant. So I'm gonna unmute Mohammed Irfan for now. Hello, can you able to hear me, sir? Yeah, yeah. Hi. Yeah. Uh, hello. 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 Go ahead with your question. Yeah, sir. Actually, I have completed my graduation 2013. Okay. So eight years gap is acceptable. I, I don't understand the question. Yeah. Actually, I have completed my graduation in 2013. Okay. So I have a gap of eight years. No, that's that's not a problem. Uh, basically, what will happen is the uh, the evaluation companies uh, will just make sure that you have the equivalent of a U.S. bachelor's degree. I would assume that that gap that you're talking about, you're working during that time. So that's actually a, a positive. Um, most people, if you're looking at five to 10 years after their undergraduate that they come back and do their MBA or their master's of science in management. So uh, you would definitely qualify. Okay, okay. One more question, sir, I want to ask. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Uh, can I apply for a fall intake now? Yes, uh, it is. We still are accepting applications for the fall. Fall accepting. Uh, so within how many days will I receive I-20 if I uh, uh, apply to tomorrow? Yeah, that's a great question. 
Um, if your application was complete tomorrow, uh, we would be able to give you an answer back in a week. Um, and then you'd be issued your I-20 at that point in time. Now, the, the visa meeting that you have in India, uh, I can't guarantee you're going to get that really quickly, but we can issue uh, the I-20 upon acceptance uh, once your application is complete. And that generally takes about a week. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you, Devan. Actually, it's a great talking with you. So tomorrow I'll go ahead and apply my application in Indianapolis. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you, Irfan. And now I'm going to unmute uh, Reshmi Nair. And you can ask. And you please go ahead with your question. Hello, Devan. Hello. Yeah, you audible. Yeah, can you I hear me, sir? Hello? Can you hear me, sir? I think I have two people asking questions now. Yeah, is that yeah. correct? I guess Enamel is back now. Uh, I'll Enamel, please go next. And first, we'll take the question from Reshmi Nair. Okay? Go ahead. Uh, hello. Uh, yeah, is there any waiver for uh, IELTS? Uh, no, we cannot issue a waiver. The only the only way you would be able to not do the English proficiency would be if you had a, a degree already in the United States. I don't understand. Any other uh, English proficiency test? Yeah, I mean, we accept ILETS, TOEFL, and Duolingo. Duolingo, yeah, okay. Perfect, fine. All right. So, scholarships are there? We do not have any scholarships, teaching assistantships, or graduate assistantships. Uh, basically, students are expected to file a statement of financial support once they have been accepted into the program. Thank you, Reshmi. And I'm an animal. You can, you can go next. 